Hello and welcome to today's episode of Building the 200 Subscriber Scenario Special. We are back, and hopefully more frequently. Um, at least, I feel like this the gap between the last episode and this episode isn't as big as the gap between 1 and 2. But today, as promised, we will be doing Chinese tactical aircraft. Um, as you can see off camera, I just kind of removed like 90% of the Chinese military since it doesn't really concern this scenario. Honestly, uh, if I knew the orbits of these better, I would probably just eliminate the satellites too because most of these probably won't be a factor because I'm imagining the scenario won't last more than a couple hours tops. I think that's all it's good. And honestly, most of the action is probably going to be in the first hour or two as China basically alpha strikes the carrier battle group. Um, I did update the database version as well, which actually worked for once to update my existing scenario rather than just deleting everything. Uh, so I do actually want to check. I didn't do this when I was cleaning up China, but I do want to check... Uh, Let's see, hypothetical platforms. Uh, ooh, Sea Apache, all for the Marine Corps. Uh, not the, not what I thought it was. Uh, oh yeah, Air Force is adopting the wedge tail, so that's a thing, or at least a version of it. Um, I think there will be some upgrade. You know, it'll be fitted with, hopefully most modern sensors we have since those E3s are getting really long in the tooth. Uh, crow's nest that we don't need. Uh, okay, so the Super Hornets are the same. Uh, doesn't look like they have a growler entry. Uh, let's see. Uh, they still don't have a newer entry for the F-24. I gotta... I gotta actually make a proper request for that, because I love playing with some of these uh, fictional platforms. Okay, some drones. Don't care too much about those. <laughs> Blackbird's armed with AMRAMs. There's an uh, interesting concept. And the SR-782, which they give an in-service date of 1998. Well, I have to wonder if that program's actually happening, as people have been talking about. XQ-58 Valkyrie? Carrier capable. This is... Uh, what's the speed? Okay, subsonic. I was gonna say the... I was wondering if this was, like, a drone version of that, uh supersonic air force bomber from way back in the day but no this seems just like a standoff low speed uh yeah this is more for coin really than anything i mean not that it would be useless in a pure conflict i mean this would be perfect for surveillance and hitting small targets kind of like the tb2 but longer range and probably a bit faster. But. No, this is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, that's what threw me off the first entry. Excuse me, was Air Force. Okay, then of even greater interest to me for ships, do we have. Uh, da, 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 I am not seeing. What is this? A manned surface vessel? Okay. Ah, they're finally putting some Sea Whiz on those. As they should. Uh, so I'm not seeing the, um... Uh... Yeah, I was kind of hoping they would have added the, uh... The future large surface combatant. Uh... I don't think this is... Yeah, this is just kind of... 
This looks kind of like an unmanned littoral combat ship. <laughs> um, yeah, not seeing it. They do have zoom waltz with HVPs and now um, uh, ballistic missiles, I would imagine. Ventral prompt strike, yeah. And 12 cells for that. Alright, so nothing new there unfortunately. Now this update should... Let's switch over to the US side real quick, because I... Oh, I think the radars are off. That's why it's uh, not doing uh, what I thought they would do. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. So this shows that new radar mechanic I was talking about, where they updated the models so they'd be more realistic. So instead of just four perfect angular cones, you can see it kind of bulges out, and then where you get the side lobes, it's kind of not as effective. Um, I wish there was kind of a 3D view, like uh, Google Maps-ish, where you could tilt the camera and see like an envelope. I suppose uh, Tac View might have that actually. So let's uh, uh, 3D view. Uh, okay. Oh, I just gotta update this because my, uh... Uh, I haven't used TacView since before my hard drive broke, so... Uh, TacView 64. Okay, now I think I can go and launch TacView. Uh, here we go. I don't know if it shows radar cones, though. Uh, on the plus side, we can check our placement in the world, which I do like that. Oh, they still don't have a model for the... Uh... <laughs> I don't think that ship's that small. They still don't have a model for the Ford class, I see. Otherwise, everything here checks out. And, yeah, I don't see any... Yeah, I can add an object, but there's no, like, options or anything. Uh, let's minimize that for a second. Whoop. Uh, minimize you. There we go. Um... Yeah, so if we switch... Honestly, uh, let's see, sensors, everyone's just going to, have sensors and sonar on, except the submarines, those we're going to turn, uh, stuff off on. I think I'm overwhelming the game a little bit here. <laughs> or, I guess, my computer more accurately. Uh, they'll, they'll be on a mission silence. But everyone else here... Oh, that's... Okay. Yeah, so they won't... Uh, they'll have radar... The sh surface ships are going to have radars and sonars on. They'll be picked up, but... I think they would be anyways. Likewise, we're gonna put emissions control on that. And now we can switch the camera to China. <laughs> I like how it had a reboot act me with the unit. So that's what our 3D view looks like here. Uh, we can see What is the model they're using for these? Okay, so these are using Arendtal? Uh, class Corvettes, I think, as a model. Not fully sure on that. And then they do have, it looks like, a model for the frigate. Maybe not quite the same one. I don't recall seeing a crane on it, but close enough the submarines and I think they do have a 
Okay, the Lu Yangs have a model that's pretty close. And then... For the Shaodong, they do have... An actual model for that. Um... And this is their supply ship that should be lar way larger than that, I think. For a reason, supply ships don't seem to scale well. Okay, so it looks like it does show SAM sites. It shows their missile coverage, but not, uh... At least in some cases? Maybe that's electronic warfare, but... Alright, so enough playing with that. I promised uh, tactical aircraft, so let's get into it. I'm going to place them initially just in the center of China because there's a lot of empty space. Uh, eventually, I'll move them out to air bases. Like, even this group here, I'm eventually going to disperse to these three air bases, probably up here. Meanwhile, the um, tactical aircraft are going to be dispersed to bases along the coast. And even some at Woody Field here uh, that the Chinese came up with. So, just looking at inventory here. And remember, our goal is roughly 10%. So, um, going down the list. Uh, we're not going to include the J7s. Those are going to be a reserve fighter. Uh, we certainly could use them to soak up missiles but we're gonna say the Chinese are gonna go in with their best their first attempt is gonna be their best attempt and they're gonna not want to just throw away lives and equipment even if it is old so we've got let's see People's Liberation Army Air Force has about three dozen Su-27s 73 Su-30s and 24 Su-35s um, and let's see, the People's Liberation Navy, Army, Air Force, or whatever, uh, they've got about two dozen, two dozen J-10s, about six J-11s, and about, f or, uh, well, six dozen J-11s and four dozen J-15s. Uh, let's see, and two dozen Su-30, Su-30s, yeah. Um, ch -ch 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 God. So I think we're just going to go off of fighter totals here. We're not going to, I'm not going to try to use everyone. Uh, J-10s. J-10s and J-11s are def definitely their most numerous. Um, they also have increasing numbers of J-16s and J-20s. So, let's see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch. So they got about a thousand fighters alone. So we're probably gonna have to put down a hundred <laughs> it's uh, not good news for the uh, for the carrier battle group but so if we say a hundred is our target number to shoot for um... okay uh... I don't want to accidentally roll something out because it's technically multi-roll. Uh, so let's start with the J-10. Surely they'd want to, uh... I think they'd want to show that their new flagship fighter, uh, fourth gen fighter is capable. You know, for export sales and stuff. And of course we'll use their latest version with their domestic engine that finally works. Uh... Okay, we'll just put it in fairy mode for now. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten. 
Oh, really? Uh, or wait. No, I hit... Darn it, I have to copy these individually. Okay. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 5, I said 28, 29, 30. Uh, let's see, we're going for about 100 total. Yeah, let's double that to 60. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay. So well, that should be sixty. I got my math right. Yep, sixty J tens. And now, again, with their next most numerous being the J11. We'll probably have 40 of those. Uh, let's see. And their most up-to-date version is... J11B, but this is only for the first air brigade. So we'll probably put in, let's say, 10 of these. Well, nah, let's say, I don't know how big the first air brigade is, but let's say they've got a few more by this point in time, because again, future. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so they'll say they're more modern J11s. Uh, we'll say J16 next. Which I believe. Okay, so that's a Su 30 copy. What we'll say is. Or, wait, J16 is the navalized version? Oh. Uh. J15 is their navalized version. I think. Yeah, J15. Um, but what we're gonna do... I don't know if the J16 is carrier capable. Well, no, it's Army Air Force. So, I'm gonna say no to that. But we will say, uh, otherwise, the latest variant. We're gonna say... How many does... Uh... Okay, we'll say... Yeah, the Air Force. Ferry mode. And let's see, Air Force has a little under 200, so we'll say about 20. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But we're also going to do 11, 12. But we're also going to put in eight of the um, electronic warfare variants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That way they can kind of provide uh, support for the tactical aircraft in addition to the larger strike packages. All right, so we're at 12 J-16s, eight J-16Ds, 40 J-11s, and 60 J-10s. Now, there's not too much more room to expand here, so I think we're going to use a mix of 
Oh, what is it? The, um... Probably the... Let's see, we have the J-20, which is their interceptor. And then, was it the J-31 that was, uh... Okay, so, and they have only about 50 of these right now, at least according to Wikipedia. Um, okay, we'll say it's their latest version. And for this, we will say that and they'll deploy 10 instead of 5, because 50, 10% by, um, of that force will be 5. So we got that. Um, and then J31. Uh, okay, so these are supposed to start entering service later. So we'll say maybe around 20 of these. Very low, uh, numbers. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 17. I guess what I'm kind of envisioning is these FC-31s. Uh, uh, why can't they just call it a J-31? Basically, these um, FC-31, J-31s, and the J-20s kind of being the hole puncher in the carrier's air defense force. And then once that hole is open, the fourth gen stuff is going to flood through. But I got to do some reading on Chinese tactics, too, to see if that would actually be what they would do. Um, again, we kind of want to attack all at the same time. So they can't, you know, hit them with everything they got. Hopefully overwhelm them. And, um, and not give them a chance to respond or retreat. That's kind of the Chinese's side goal. Um, actually, one change I will make to this scenario in light of the Russian performance in um, in uh, Ukraine. Let's see. Where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. there's edit unit proficiencies. Oh, there it is. We are going to put them all on a cadet footing, and I'm actually. I don't do this lightly either, but. Uh, edit sites. Here we go. We're going to put them on, nope, here it is. And likewise, I think we're going to put the U.S. on a veteran footing here. And the reason I do this is because everyone, you know, Russia talked big shit. And everyone thought they were going to be huge and whatnot. And... You know, and just steamroll Ukraine. But what happened? No. They, um... <laughs> they are the ones kind of getting steamrolled right now. So, likewise, I think... So, I respect that China's got a lot of military capability. And they seem to be as professional as the Russians right now. But, or at least as professional as people thought they were before the war in Ukraine. Um, I don't think they have quite the problem with corruption that Russia does. They, I mean, maybe at the t upper levels, but I don't think it's reaching all the way to the bottom. Um, and they have a lot more money to, to kind of chuck at things, too. So even if there is the same amount or more corruption, um, that money can kind of still get through to making units combat effective. But... Also, the other reason I make this dis decision 
is China does not have a lot of mil modern military experience, I should say specifically. Um, they fought a little skirmish with Vietnam a while back. And that's about it. The only combat actions I know of is they had a border skirmish with the Russians. They had a skirmish with the Vietnamese over some islands, which uh, I guess some reports say they performed pretty poorly in. They had some border conflicts with India that were all small scale, just like the Russian ones. And then before that, their biggest war was probably uh, Korea where uh, they threw their guys into the meat grinder where they they made some gains, but they got pretty ground up in the process. So um, I think they've moved a bit away from using that Russian doctrine, but... And of course, their engines are still not the best either. That's an area they've laid behind in for a long time. So that's why I'm making the decision to reduce their proficiency. Um... And certainly I'm not reducing it all the way down, but it will be reduced from standard, as it were. And likewise, the reason I'm raising the USN proficiency is we've been basically at war one way or another for, what, all but 20 years of our existence. We've been engaging in combat operations, which is uh, not great, but... Um, the side effect of that is we're constantly testing military tactics, military equipment, military theory. And additionally, um, lately it's our jets that have been doing the shooting down like of that uh, Syrian jet in, um, well, Syria. Um, and, you know, we're very, very proficient at ground strikes by this point, given that's most of what we've done. But we have also have a renewed focus on air-to-air -air missions, and I think that Syria missions showed it with that Hornet shooting down the, uh, the fitter, I think it was. And obviously our equipment's tested, you know, battle-tested, and uh, especially with this Ukraine business, you know, now there's going to be even more money pouring in. And the most important factor in this determination, too, is... Back in, what was it, 2018, when that um, there was a destroyer off the coast of Yemen that was attacked by cruise missiles. There were older cruise missiles, sure, but still cruise missiles, and they managed to shoot them all down. And then there was a small task force that sailed through that also got attacked, and they shot all those down. And one of them, potentially even with a laser, because DOD was very tight-lipped about the encounter. And then, you know, after that, we promptly just blew up their cruise missile site. But the fact that we have shown proficiency in dealing with at least cruise missile threats, and surely they do a bunch of training for ballistic missile threats too, that gives me more confidence in the American performance. So that's why I am raising their proficiency, especially since I think a lot of China's doctrine is kind of borrowed from Russia. I'm sure they've built their own twists on it now, and lately they seem to be trying to copy our doctrine. But because it, they're still in the process of shifting, and because we saw that the Russians couldn't even defend an anti-aircraft cruiser against two cruise missiles, maybe three depending on the reports, um, that's kind of a big negative. And while China hasn't lost a ship like that, the fact that for the longest time, they followed the same doctrine as the people who did lose a ship like that is uh, is part of the reason, too, why for the downgrade. So, I don't expect that will significantly change the course of the missions. Uh, certainly, I think the Americans will be a bit quicker on the defense, because really all that proficiency does is adjust the, um, the OODA loop. Uh, observe... Uh, fuck, what does it stand for? Um... Here, if I just say... Uh... 
Oh, their weapon's tight right now. But the, oh, the A loop. Uh, is it here? I, I know I can find it. I'm not going to bother right now. But basically, it's like observe, orient, decide, act, I think it stands for. And that basically simulates, okay, something popped up on your screen. You take a few minutes or a few seconds to notice that, to figure out what it is, um, to decide what to do about it, and then actually perform the doing part of that, you know, what pressing the button or whatever. So... Uh, mostly, I think that unit experience uh, affects that. For aircraft, it might affect how many Gs their aircraft can pull, so it can indirectly influence their maneuverability in that sense. Uh, a more proficient pilot could probably handle a tighter turn without passing out. Um, stuff like that. But again... Uh, with the numbers so decisively in favor of the Chinese at this point. As much as I'm rooting for our carrier battle group, I'm having trouble uh, kind of figuring out what how they can win. I think they'll survive for a bit, but eventually they're going to go down. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe uh, we'll be surprised. Uh, okay, so with that, now that's most of the fight. Now that's just, yeah, that's, this all here, that's just the fighters that will mostly be devoted to, um, to, um, whatchamacallit, um, protection of their strike package and stuff. Um, I suppose we could add some, let's see, they use the Harbin Z9 for CSAR. We could probably do that. Um, I'm going to have to write a little script probably for, um, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'll be distributed for their land bases. Uh, what I want to do is write a script that basically rolls a chance of a pilot bailing out. Because um, I don't think that happens automatically. It's just, it's killed. And that's that. But Fleet Command which I loved back in the day and played the hell out of it. That one actually does roll a chance for like a pilot bailing out or something. Um, so I do kind of want to include that here. Uh, just to force that consideration. Um, let's see here. There was one other aircraft I gotta add. I'm trying to remember. Ah, right, the J7, or the JH7, or the FBC-1. Um, I have 140 of those, so probably... I'm gonna go a bit higher. Oh, oh, okay, they have closer to 300. Uh, between both services, so I'm actually going to, um, we'll put down 30 of those. Let's see, how is it recorded in the database? Uh, nope. There we go. Uh... The latest variant for the Air Force is going to be this one. So we'll say about 15 of those. And these are dedicated attack aircraft. Um, they're roughly equivalent to the Sepakat Jaguar uh, that the British, French, and Indians used. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Uh, probably the F-105 is a pretty good equivalency there. 12, 13, 14, 15. So, uh, that, they're basically dedicated ground attack aircraft. But, uh, especially the Navy ones, I think, are upgraded to carry cruise missiles. So we have quite the, uh, quite the platform here. And uh, I'm very heavily debating if I actually do want to give the Americans an extra destroyer, because right now this seems... If I was sending a group into the middle of a conflict zone, yeah, you know what, I think I'm going to do it. And, uh, okay, let's see. What did I call them? Oh, this isn't the... The one aircraft operations ferret one and two okay so I went with animal names I guess ferret cat rabbit um, dog MH60R uh, we'll use all sign. Um, hmm. Oh, what's a good small mammal name? Since that uh, seems to have been my convention here. Um, you know, I think I'm going to. Uh, See if I can get a list from the internet real quick. Gerbil. Okay. Gerbil it is. Pulse sign gerbil. Add two. I feel like this extra destroyer, because I mean, we're going the Navy the idea is the Navy's going into this when tensions are really high. Like the Americans don't necessarily expect that they'll attack, but the probability is really, 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 really high that they might. So that's why there's a bigger show of force. So with that, we have pretty much five destroyers then. Um, oh, I actually need two sets of aircraft. So we'll have five destroyers, which now I'm very tempted to make six. But I won't. Not now, at least. Maybe I'll change my mind later. Um, okay, likewise. Uh, MH60R. I think this was the super duper souped up one. Uh, where's that list again? Um, Hedgehog. Did I use Hedgehog already? I don't think I did. Uh, two. Alright, so aircraft operations, Hedgehog 1 and 2. There we go. Okay, so that's flushed out. And I think we flushed out all of our land-based tactical aircraft too. So at this point, the only thing to really add would be... We got our land-based tactical aircraft. We got our land-based strategic aircraft. Uh, there's not... I don't think there would really be much that helicopters could contribute. I mean, by the time any of their sensors really get within range of the battle group, they just get shot down. Um, you know, I take that back. I will give them some... Uh... Um, let's see... Oh, that would be People's Liberation Army, maybe Air Force. Uh, I 
Do they have a newer ASW? The Z8. Oh, it's just the Super Frelin. Um. We'll give them eight. Super Frelins and. Maybe uh, six KA 28s. I think that will uh, be more more than sufficient for short range uh, operations. I'm not going to bother trying to simulate all the extra transports and stuff that they would have at the bases. It would kind of clog them up, but okay. So this is. Kind of the newest. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we will add the, um, what was that other one? The Z8. Um,. weird because uh, my source here on Wikipedia says uh, what's this JZ8 oh this must be a reconnaissance version of the Finback but yeah this, Wikipedia says they have a total of 24 Z8s for ASW 6 for SAR and 4 for Medivac so we're going to, it looks like the newest one is these old ones, so. Um, it's otherwise they're K and G variants, which are not listed here, but they don't seem to be for that. So again, I'm going to put eight. Uh, one, two, three, four. These are higher than the 10%, but I think their effect will be minimal. And then... Technically, it's a strategic aircraft, but it's going to be operating from the forward bases, probably. So, uh, Maritime Patrol will probably have a couple of Y6s. Um, or, sorry, not Y6s. Uh, actually, Y9 seems to be their most numerous type, so... Uh... want to say this is going to be their maritime a KQ 2000 hope that's Elant nope uh Y8 uh KJ 200 Cub We're looking for a Y8X. Uh, here we go, Maritime Patrol. Uh, technically, they have less than what I'm going to give them, but let's say they have a total 12. We'll give them four for this operation. I think that's reasonable enough. Uh, just because the US does have subs. Now I kind of want to add another one of those, but I can't. Well, I can. I can do anything I want, as I'm the one making this, but I'm trying to keep it somewhat balanced. Um, let's see here. So other than that, I think the only thing left to do is give... Okay, so that's some offshore. I didn't catch that those got added. That's all offshore facilities. We're not going to model that because obviously, if we're going to use our tomahawks on something or other land attack missiles, it's going to be on the shit that's threatening to kill us now. Um, 
Okay, so I believe only the frigates, or corvettes, have uh, the capacity for a helicopter. Yeah, one open parking, one pad. So we're going to give them... Alright, so... Um... Is that under their Air Force? Oh, maybe that's under their army. I would have thought they, uh... What is it? What do people call it? The Copy Hawk, I think? <laughs> that new helicopter they got, but, uh... They, uh... Here we go. The Z-20? Is that it? Yeah, I think it's the Z-20. Yep, okay, Z-20 is the copy hawk. Oh, they do have an ASW version of it. I don't know how much they have, but I'm going to assume that's going to kind of be their most modern platform for naval-based ASW. But because this is a Corvette, we're going to go on the assumption that they'll be using a smaller helicopter for those. So we'll be using the older Z9. Yeah, because that's nice and small. So they will get one. Uh, okay. I think this is should be ASW. Yeah, okay. So we'll give that one there. Eventually, I'm going to have to make up call signs for all these, but this episode's already in pretty long, so I'm just placing units at this point. Yeah, we're at almost an hour. It's so nice to be able to use my second monitor for a change, because <laughs> most of the games I play are so old that I... Like, I tried using it with uh, Fighters Anthology, but... Um, if I used it, there was like a 50% chance anytime the resolution changed, the game would crash, which is obviously uh, less than ideal. Okay, so now for the big meat. What do we have here? We have one cruiser uh, and four destroyers. Now, I believe these each have two pads. The... No, they don't. They only have, uh... By, oh, sorry, I meant two spots in the hangar, but they don't. So, these might also be relatively cramped. Uh, God, I hate some of the tech view controls. Um, that's surprising, but... Let's take a look at it. Uh, type 052 d Oh, when you look at that, they uh, they are equipped with uh, they are indeed equipped with the Z9. I just looking at a picture of one now. Uh, I suppose I can bring that over. You can see right there that's plainly a Z9. So I guess they're also going to get the uh, the Z9 treatment. So. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. One, two, three, four. So that takes care of the destroyers. This should have some capacity for a cargo aircraft. <laughs> one. Okay. This one's probably going to be. So that will probably be a Frelin equivalent. Uh, I did see Army Navy. Z-18. Um. Yeah, so that's gonna be... The ASW, AEW. Okay, so that's gonna be you. 
Now for the Zing He. Your facilities. That's the wrong button. I hate that there's two screens for this. Okay, they can support two, and I'm gonna say they're gonna support the newer black uh, copy hawk, <laughs> as it were, uh, which I believe is the Z20, as we previously established. E ESS copy. What? Uh, I don't know what ESS or ESSS. Yeah, ESSS. But here, here's the uh, ASW version. And now there's the actual Shandong. Um. Uh, let's see. That is the wrong screen again. Uh, aircraft abilities. Okay, so they have room for 36 in the hangar and 50 open parking. Obviously, we don't want to use all of that. So. Let's say, I think, let me check Wikipedia to get an idea. I know I have the Ford loaded a little bit to the gills, so I'm willing to kind of do the same here. Let's see. 44 total aircraft. Oh, they even give me an air wing. That's nice. Um, so we're going to change that up, though. So they have 32 J-15s. We're going to give him 24. So, um... We're going to... We're probably going to give him 22, actually. Um... Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. This is what... Uh... J15 Asa, Neric Desem. Okay, I think they're pretty much the same. I don't know how often the that two seater is used. They're obviously kind of copying the Super Hornet with single and dual seater, unless that's a training only variant. Which I'm not. It's got weapons, so I assume the second seat would be uh, like a weapons officer or um or something along those lines um systems operator uh, there's not really any good <laughs> pictures because china um let's see Yeah, I think I'm just going to give them the single seaters and say the other is uh, for training. So what, we're at 22 of these guys. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You know what? Actually, I will. There. You can have two full squadrons. Or at least what I define as a squadron. They will have the Roaring Shark, which is an EW. Basically, their Growler variant. Uh, then I will give them... We'll say eight. Uh, I guess they got no model for this, since they got a paper airplane. Uh, so we're going to give them eight of the FC-31 carrier variant, assuming that will one day actually be a thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to get together with their land-based stealth aircraft, that's going to give them... Let's see, 10... 20... 30. So they'll have a total of 40 stealth. About 38. Four, wait, no. Yeah, they'll have a total of 38 stealth aircraft, which uh, is still going to be less than what the carrier has. 
But the carrier is also still stuck with those block three hornets. Uh, okay. Which are a little bit stealthier than the block twos currently in service, so. And uh, basically, I think almost none of the other aircraft here have any sort of stealth, so. It's possible that the tech advantage employed here that the USN has in most areas may be enough to let their air wing shoot down a good chunk of the first wave. And I think... I think just because of logistics, I might end up splitting this attack into two or three waves with... Um, Uh, that that's gonna be for another episode. I don't want to get sidetracked here. Uh, anyways, let's finish with our tactical aircraft. Um, okay, so then they show as having eight Z18s, which I think that's gonna be a split. Probably a uh, tran. They have them as transport helicopters. Um, I think they're gonna be. Honestly, carrier base ASW and AEW. So they're operating these big boys. And we'll say four of each. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's give a split of five ASW and three AEW. Um, because honestly, their, their AEW is going to be a lot less efficient than anything the Navy has. Specifically the E2D, I guess, in this case. But also just the AEW that the Air Force is going to provide. I don't think they're really going to need... I think they'll mostly be for their own defense. Rather than in an offensive role. Okay, let's see. Then the other part of their air wing is... This is Z9s. I'm going to go ahead and change that and give them another four the 20s in the ASW well we're gonna have two actually I, I guess all of them are just gonna be the ASW role but I'm sure these guys can pick up pilots and stuff too um, or like eh. yeah you know what they'll get two the 20s for the ASW role and then Uh, you know what, let's give them three, and then I'm going to compromise here. And then the Z9, I think it was? Yeah. Uh, we'll give them the SAR, three of the dedicated SAR variant. So all told, we have, for our carrier, three Z9Ds, three Z20Fs, three Z18YJs, 5 Z18 FQs, 8 FC31s, 2 J15Ds, and 24 J15s. For a total of, let's do some math, 26, 34. Uh, that's 48 aircraft, so 4 over the base, but not filling this up to max. So, overall, I think that's pretty fair. Um... So I believe that's going to be that. Um, yeah, so with that, I think the next episode, hmm, trying to think. So the next episode is going to be one of two things. And I'm not going to decide right now because it'll probably depend on how much time I have to record. Since this took a bit longer than I expected. Uh, I really should have expected to take it for it to take this long. But the next episode is either going to be plopping all these aircraft into their bases and um, and you know assigning them squad names, which is that's probably going to be like a 90 minute video on its own. The other option for a shorter video would be to just kit out the uh, U.S. Battle Group with weapons. Um, uh, where's my switch sides? Here we go. So, 
obviously all of these are going to be VLS capable, so we'll be putting in my own special VLS mix. Um, I actually do have a preferred one that I've tested in a few other scenarios and it's worked pretty well. Um, I can't remember it off the top of my head. I remember about what it is, but we might have to redevelop a little bit of that. But once that's there, it's there. And uh, we'll be able to just basically copy that around to all the different ships. And then we will have to make some special modifications to... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, I for some reason I thought these were like destroyers too. I'm like, what? But no. So that'll be pretty easy to plop these full. On average, I would say we're looking at maybe maybe around 40 to 50 air defense missiles each. Probably closer to 50 because of those quad pack DSSMs. So with the Burks, we'll have 250 missiles for defensive use, and with the um, with the large surface combatant, which is basically our stand-in future cruiser, because that has two sixty-four cells, I believe the concept showed. Uh, we'll probably have closer to um, uh, seventy defensive missiles from that, maybe eighty even. Um, that one's going to be a little bit special, and because it's not well-defined, I'll probably take a few liberties with it. And that's just VLS missiles. I forgot that thing's going to have two rams on it. Um, I'm probably going to put my own Sea Whiz on it. Um, then, obviously, the carrier has some point defense stuff, as does the AO AOE-6, the USS Supply. And it is USS Supply in this case, because this is from before it was transferred to the Naval um, Logistics Force, where it got the name USNS. Uh, they've got some point defense weapons, too. And we'll also be doing, in that episode, when we get to it, we'll also be adjusting some weapon and sensor fits. Um, most notably for our stand-in cruiser, but also for the supply, because I'm going to, uh, in this scenario, I do want to give it updated uh, missiles, specifically enhanced these barrel missiles, so that might entail a sensor upgrade, as well as, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Oh, the word escapes me right now. Oh yeah, the um, give it a um, a RAM battery. Um, and actually, I think these guys have RAM batteries, don't they? Like they have one. Uh... Oh, that might be a fit we'll have to adjust because I think I know I've seen it on a couple of Burke variants, but I think it's going to become more common with the Flight 3. I guess I'll quickly look it up. Um, it's already over an hour, so... <laughs> oh, interesting. The NATO reporting name for the Type 002 is Kuznetsov Mod. <laughs> Alright, so... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um... Okay, it doesn't say, but I would expect the uh, Flight 3 Burke. Uh, they've obviously tested it on some um, aircraft. Or not aircraft, some ships. And I would say, I think there's there's one base in Spain that has the RAM on it. Um, and I forget for the life of me which one, but originally the Burks had two uh, Sea Whiz. Uh, in placements, and for cost reasons, one of them was eventually removed. I believe it was the front one? Yeah, because what I'm looking at now is the front uh, Sea Whiz removed. Uh, so basically, I probably... Hmm, they probably have the Sea Whiz on the front. 
Eh, I don't know. I'll decide that later. The rear probably get... Uh, yeah, they probably have to have the Sea Wiz on the rear, because that gives... For a single Sea Wiz, that gives it the best field of fire. But... Um, the Ram... Would... Uh, the missiles, I think, once they launch, they can be directed through Data Link anywhere, so... That doesn't matter as much where it goes, because it's still a 300... Because it's essentially a 360 degree firing arc. I think. I'd have to research that, but... But that'll be for next time as we kit this stuff out. Oh yeah, and our submarines need uh, payload packages too, because they have... Uh, they can take some missiles. Uh, what is this? Oh, torpedo decoys. Okay. Uh, three inch signal injector, torpedo decoy. Okay. They got some pretty nice decoys then. Uh, I was just seeing if maybe they would have, um, and maybe that's something we can do is add a small, basically simulate the next gen Virginia's because I think this is the Flight 5 which is the latest that's publicly planned right now. But Flight 6 might include a module for a couple of hypersonic missiles or ballistic missiles, so... Um, I might put that in for some conventional prompt strike. Uh, of course, the question is, will that work with the submarines being underwater? But, um... Yeah, probably not. Oh, well, they can still be pretty potent if, you know, you fill up with 28, say, tactical tomahawks and 12 long-range anti-ship missiles. They can still be uh, pretty potent missile bolts. I mean, 50 tomahawks will probably be enough to take Woody Island out of action, at least. I don't know if they have any... Uh... Oh, we got a... All right. Let's see what they got. Uh, they do have some YJ-12s, which I think, or oh no, those are the uh, the missile batteries I added. Uh, okay, so that's group composition. Uh, I might have to give them some air defense here, but, you know, it would at least knock that out and give you kind of a safe route. Because then you can U-turn and go back here, and then the closest they'd be able to attack would be from, uh... From, uh... Hong Kong, basically. And the island south of Hong Kong. But I think that's going to be it for today. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there and we'll see you then.